Thank you for choosing Transport Cable Rail from the RDI family of products. RDI's transform railing systems give your home the look of real wood without all the hassles of wood. With its state-of-the-art, water-resistant Resolite core, combined with an extremely durable, low-maintenance acrylic surface, Transform combines form, function, and versatility to add a rich, stylish look to your home. Choose from a variety of colors, top rail styles, accessories, and baluster styles to create your own custom design. For an ultra-modern, unique twist and a time-proven concept, RDI offers Transform Cable Rail. Transform Cable Rail consists of corrosion and weather-resistant stainless steel components, stretch-resistant cable, and innovative, easy-install fittings. First, prepare all posts and mounting surfaces before installation. Transform cable rail must be installed on 4 inch by 4 inch wood posts sleeved with transform post sleeves to support cable tension. Measure 1 8 of an inch from your deck surface onto your post to allow for the height of the mid baluster support foot and mark the post. Repeat for all posts in your installation. Next, you'll need to determine the placement of your top rail by measuring up from the bottom of the post to 33 and 13 16 of an inch for a 36 inch finished rail height or 39 and 13 16 of an inch for a 42 inch finished rail height. Again, do this for all your posts in your installation. Use the pre-drilled mid baluster support as a template against your post to determine hole placement for both posts in your cable span and center evenly between your first hole and top rail and your last hole and bottom. Mark the mid baluster support where it lines up with your bottom rail and with the top rail marks. Then, cut the mid baluster support. Mark the holes for your cable runs on the post using the mid baluster support as a template. Keep in mind that the transform cable system is designed for the cable runs to be 3.1 inches apart on center. Using a 732nd inch drill bit for common redwood posts or a 1564 inch drill bit for Douglas fir posts, drill at least one and a half inches deep into your posts where you've marked for your cable fittings. Do this on both posts. On a side note to speed installation, we're using an AccuDrill Precision Drill Guide available at your local retail store. Carefully re-drill through these holes, making sure to drill through the sleeve only using a 15 32nd inch drill bit to allow the fitting to anchor into the post. Next, on the opposite post, on which you will have your extended lags, re-drill through these holes, making sure to drill through the sleeve only using a 5 16 inch drill bit to allow the extended lag thread to pass through your post sleeve carefully so not to cause damage to the sleeve. If your installation includes mid posts, you can run your cable directly through the wood post, keeping in mind that fittings don't need to be installed at every post. To do this, use the mid baluster support as a template on both sides of the post to mark hole placement where the cable will pass through the post. Then drill 5 32nd inch through holes for your cable. Remember if you're using one piece trim rings, be sure to install them before running cable. Align your top beam to where the mid baluster support will connect and use the mid baluster support foot to mark holes on the top beam. Using a 3 16 inch drill bit, pre-drill the holes in your top beam. Mount the mid baluster support foot to the bottom of your mid baluster support using two number 10 by one inch screws. Next, mount the mid baluster support to your deck surface using number 8 by 1.5 inch screws. Drive two pan head screws down through the top beam to connect the mid baluster support to the top beam. Next, after ensuring that your top beam rests squarely in your mid baluster support, secure the upper bracket and beam to the post using six of the provided mounting screws using three per bracket. Be sure to begin with the bottom center screw to avoid misalignment. 
set the transform cable rail drill guide on top of the bracket next to the post. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill from top of the guide through top bracket and beam. Repeat this on the other end of rail. If your installation is 42 inches high and exceeds 91 inches in length, you'll need an additional rail stiffener purchased separately. Simply measure to length, cut and install as illustrated. Starting at either end, snap your top rail onto the top beam until the full length of the top rail locks into place. Lastly, install two of the supplied painted screws upward from underneath through the pre-drilled location. This will secure the bracket, beam and top rail together. Then repeat for the other end of the rail. Now, let's install some cable. First, place your topmost stationary lag into the hole that you drilled in step 4 and drive the lag thread into the post using a 3 8 inch open end wrench on the wrench flats on the fitting. You'll know that the fitting is secure when the shoulder of the fitting makes contact with the wood. Repeat this for all remaining stationary lags. Next, place your topmost extended lag into the hole that you drilled in step 5 and drive the leg threads into the wood post using a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. The fitting is secured when the lag threads are fully in the post. Repeat this for all extended legs. Screw the tensioner onto the topmost extended lag just far enough to cover the male threads on the extended lag. Expect some slack. You'll need it later when you tighten your cable runs. Repeat this for all your remaining extended legs. Next, while ensuring that the cut cables are clean, burr-free and tightly wound, insert the cables into fittings approximately 1 and 1 16th of an inch until you feel it rest against a hard stop. Then pull against the fitting to secure the wedges into the fitting. Be sure that the cable is fully inserted as this is critical in the performance of the cable under pressure. Keep in mind that if you need to, the cable at this point can be removed using the RDI cable release key sold separately. Once you've got the cable firmly locked into the fitting, feed the cable through the mid baluster support and any intermediate posts. Pull the cable taut alongside the extended lag with tensioner and mark the cable at the score line indicated on the body of the tensioner as shown in the illustration. Cut the cable at this mark. Loosen the tensioner so that approximately 5 or 6 threads are showing and then push the cable into the fitting, rotating the fitting in the direction of the lay of the cable. Once the cable is firmly seated within the fitting, pull the cable away from the post to help to lock the cable into the fitting. Tension the cable by holding the cable gripping portion of the fitting stationary using a 3 8 inch wrench as you rotate the female threaded portion of the fitting with an additional wrench. Tension all the cables to your desired amount in sequence, beginning with the bottom cable, then the top, then second up from the bottom, then second down from the top, and so on. The number of your cable runs will be determined by finished rail height and optional use of bottom rail. Don't forget your post caps. Thanks for watching our video and for purchasing RDI products. Please visit us at www.rdirail.com for other valuable information and other fine RDI products.